right, let's jump into a portfolio recap uh, for you here today. Uh, a lot of people have asked me some questions about hedging and a few other things. So I thought we'd try to capture as much of it as we can in one quick video here. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, S&P, we're getting close to the end of the day. It's 3.30 here on May 31st, last trading day of the month. Uh, markets are down a tab. We've got ES futures down $21. Not a big deal, not a big move. We're pretty flat on our portfolio today. Uh, so just taking a quick look at SPX here. On the daily, we are still in a decent longer term and shorter term uptrend. Just a little rolling over here, but really nothing on MACD, squeeze, or stochastic momentum to indicate we're heading significantly lower at this point in time. Just a little bit of a pullback on this higher high. And let's see if this 50% retracement from the uh, you know January high to the uh, October lows of last year, see if that 50% mark that we just beat uh, we've been just hovering around this area. So let's see if that holds. Uh, we'll play it by ear and we'll see how it goes. On the NASDAQ, though, a little bit, uh, a slightly little bit different story. On the daily chart here, uh, we are starting to get a little bit of a rollover in MACD. Not the squeeze, still firing, but that squeeze is long. Typically, we look at an eight-day uh, squeeze as being uh, the, the length on average that we get in. So we're much past that. Uh, we did start to roll over, then NVIDIA happened, and we rocketed back up. Uh, so let's see you know, if this thing settles down. We've got a little bit of lower high on stochastic momentum. If this rolls over, heads down on the uh, NASDAQ, then maybe that'll take the S&P with it. We'll see what other sectors are being affected. A quick look briefly at some of the indexes. Didn't really plan for a lot of this, but well, we'll take a look at it. What the heck? So here's the XLK. So taking a look at the XLK, the tech stocks look exactly the same as the NASDAQ. Uh, no difference there. On uh, the XLY, consumer discretionary, uh, looking a little bit weaker. Uh, you've got, again, MACD, TTM squeeze rolling over, and you don't have stochastic momentum really rocketing as uh, high. And on the, uh, on the monthly, you can see some momentum coming out. However, uh, this week, we did get a PSR reversal signal on the XLY. So XLY mainly looking at Amazon, Tesla as our two stocks there. So we'll keep an eye on, on what's happening there. Uh, but this uptrend line uh, continues to be in play and uh, nothing to change our minds there. Uh, communications uh, here looks the same as the uh, XLK. Uh, financials, uh, you know, trying to hang on to this uptrend line uh, that we saw here. We dipped below, we dipped again today below, and we're finally maybe settling below it. See if that doesn't hold. We're in a squeeze. We're not quite oversold, but a little curl there and a little bit of a increase in MACD. So financials could be headed a little bit lower near term. Uh, and on the monthly here as well, they're still in this downtrend. Even though there's a little bit of a rally in the overall downtrend, nothing here to say that financials are done going down. Uh, so there's where we are on looking at a few of the plays. Quick look at energy really quick too. That did break this uptrend line uh, that we have. Not a super solid uptrend line. Uh, but uh, you're heading into some oversold territories. We'll see what happens. Oil getting whacked today a bit more uh, as we go through. And as we look at some of the futures here, you know, really you're looking at oil being hit pretty hard. Again, it's down from that 130 high um, back last year in February. But even the more recent highs in April around in you know 82, 83 area, uh, we're down significantly off of those highs, 20 points lower almost now. So um, oil getting hit pretty hard again. Still think we may find some support in this area in the 60s here. And uh, let's see what happens uh, if we can bounce in oil. Gold turning upwards uh, again. Uh, so starting to curl on MACD, squeeze today. Uh, reversing as well as the stochastic momentum running higher. So gold's got a little bit of momentum still in this piece, our 
bearish trend, but we're getting close to potentially breaking that if we can break 2000 on gold. So we'll see where that goes on gold. And then I think what's more interesting than um, many of the other things is taking a look at the US dollar. Look at the strength of the US dollar. This thing has just been on an absolute tear uh, since the beginning of May here when it hit around the 101 level and this uh, you know support or demand zone, if you want to call this the demand zone here, just bounced off of this thing and it, it has just been on a tear higher uh, moving up to 104 here. And uh, now you're starting to think, well, we're going to hit some uh, some newer highs uh, back in this area. Uh, or more recent highs, I should say, at the 106 level, where I think there's some resistance there. Um, total highs would be at the 114 level. Um, so as the U.S. dollar strengthens, you see the euro uh, futures continue to drop, and you also see the uh, Aussie dollar also continue to drop. So you've seen these selling off in the futures while the dollar is strengthening. Um, so if there's a flight to safety type of trade, I don't know that we're there yet, but people might start to load up on gold, gold futures, uh, as well as the U.S. dollar. Um, those are both areas, and you can see both of those starting to rise here uh, as a safe um, haven play potentially um, as we go through. So there's a quick view of the markets, but I think we're still in a, an, an uptrend as far as you know, the S&P goes. So we'll we'll continue to just watch this in here. Uh, I don't think until we break this 21 EMA around 4150 and potentially this uptrend line around 4130 something right now, until those are broken, uh, you know, the bullish thesis is still in play for the short term time being right now. All right, uh, let's take a quick look at the portfolio and see where we are. Uh, just a quick update here uh, on today. I, I plugged in some numbers uh, on the day. Our deltas for the day, we are right around uh, 319 right now, which is a 0.12%, well within our um, 0.2 that we want to uh, stick around. So we want to you know, keep that uh, keep those deltas there. Pretty low. I'd like to see it maybe a little bit lower and, and get negative. I just can't quite get it there right now. Theta is at a nice 784, made a few moves today, boosted Theta a tad, um, still under 0.3 when I'd like to get to 0.4 or, or more. So we want to get that Theta up uh, to 0.4. So for me, Delta 0.2 or less, and Theta, I'd like to get as close to 0.4. It's very difficult to get there uh, on it uh, here. And our buying power is in the 50% range, a little high. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on the buying power. But uh, we've had a nice day today so far. We've closed $1,324 worth of trades. And we've closed so far for these uh, couple days this week. Uh, in three days, we're up $1,600. And for the month, we're going to close that out today, assuming that I don't close any more trades in the next 20 minutes, which I don't think is uh, on the board. Uh, we're going to end the month at $9,343. Nice, almost 3.5% return on our uh, on our portfolio. So a uh, $9,000 month on a roughly $260,000 trading portfolio that we're using here in the Income Navigator service. Um, all right, so there's where we are. Every Delta, Thetas, they're all in, in play. Uh, so what I want to address on the portfolio review today too is a lot of people really talking, a lot of people really worried about my hedging and whether I'm going to get smoked in a black swan event. If a black swan event happens, we're all going to be in trouble to a bit. So am I going to you know, sit and hide in a bunker every single day? No. Uh, we're going to play our strategies. We're going to be as safe as we can. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at some of our trades on the trading uh, sheet that we have. I, you know, I not only have a handful of spec trades on right now, uh, we just put a call butterfly on in Disney. We've got some 112 trades in uh, soybeans, oil, corn, oil, gold, and some oh, some call butterflies, some put spreads there. But we've also got some spec trade hedges uh, as well. So we've got uh, these spec trade hedges on a bunch of put butterflies. Okay, some low risk, 
high reward. I'm only using up right now about $4,000, $4,400 in total buying power to put some hedges on. And again, my philosophy, if you read the trade plan stuff, hedge what needs to be hedged. So let's go and jump in. So now that you got a chance to see this, uh, let's jump in and take a look at the overall uh, portfolio, see where we are on the day. So you can uh, take a quick live look in. Let's see where things are and let's see where we need to hedge. And if, if, do we feel pretty confident and pretty comfortable? I'm going to get the, uh, the calculator out because we're going to take a look at some downside stuff here. Uh, all right. So we did close an Aussie um, dollar strangle earlier today for a nice 33% winner. Uh, we've got another one here riding. We've only been in this seven days. It's down a few, you know, 200 bucks or so. Uh, mainly because uh, dollar strengthening, Aussie dollars weakening. The downside on this trade is 0.6. Okay, so where are we now? Uh, we're at 0.652. So we're a decent ways away from from that. So if if you're looking at uh, 0 0.52 divided by 0 0.6, uh, yeah, you're about nine percent away. So we would need a 10 percent drop uh, in the Aussie dollar. Uh, to to work to get hit here and if we look back and i'm not going to switch charts just to make it easy for you uh right now but 0.62 was the low back in october of last year so we would have to hit the lows of last year for me to even really start to pay attention maybe we'll hit there maybe we won't but that's what's really also the highs um of the dollar so where did the dollar peak october of last year uh, so strongly correlated to the U.S. dollar, I uh, feel pretty good here. We'd have to drop uh, a pretty good ways for me to do anything. And would I really worry about this trade at that point? No, you could take assignment at 0.6. It's still below the lows in the last four or five years. So uh, we're really not at a point, and I'm you know looking off the side here uh, so I can take a look. And I'm going to pull up a 10-year monthly chart. Uh, you know, that 0. 0.6, you'd have to go all the way back to 2020, uh, March of 2020, to even see us hitting the 0. 0.6. Uh, so we would have to go really back to a three-year low in the market uh, before I start to get worried about the Aussie dollar. So I'm not going to do anything there. You know, and uh, on the uh, British pound futures here, Again, we're down $62 in this trade in nine days. Not too worried about this trade. Uh, the low here again is September of 22. Uh, that low, you know, we're looking at, you know, 1.015. We would have to get uh, down to that all time low in the last 10 years for me to even worry about it. So I'm not, uh, not too worried about these. I'm gonna let them go. Uh, would I, I won't adjust. I'll just cash out at a 2X loss on these and move on. Uh, all right, oil. So where are we on oil? What's what's percolating on oil? So we do have a strangle on uh, here in oil, one of our future strangles. Uh, this one's a little bit down. Uh, let's take a look uh, here where we put this one on it. Uh, it's down you know, a little bit uh, on the trade right now. If I really took a quick look, uh, here we're we're down 500 bucks on this trade in 44 days. It's not even not even worth mentioning where this is going. Sixty dollar low. I might even consider taking assignment at sixty bucks. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I've also got a one one two trade on in oil, which is perfect right here. Uh, this trade we've had on for 21 days. 53 and a half is the low. If you really want to take a look and see, you know, what's the what's all this oil look like uh, here? Here's the here's the overall look of of oil. We're sitting right up in here on oil, uh, somewhere around sixty eight bucks. Oh, but what if we drop ten percent on oil, which would be a seven dollar drop? Uh, oh, we could drop all the way to sixty one. Okay, if we do that, we're going to make four thousand dollars. Hey, we're going to land in this nice big fat trap. We're not going to get uh, in trouble on our strangles or our, uh, you can see our puts way out here, uh, or our uh, naked puts on this thing. So this is our overall look at this particular 
expiration and oil futures. We got this nice big fat trap here. So if we do continue to drop, there's nothing I'm going to do. I got a 10% drop. The worst that can happen is I could go, we could go to 59 before I really got to start worrying about oil. Uh, and 59 is not a bad spot for me to own oil. Okay. That would take me, uh, you know, taking back quite a ways where, you know, to 59, I'd have to get to December of 2021. So, um, you know, really two years back, I, I would be right where oil was sitting at that particular time. But oil has consistently been moving higher. And I think with what's going on in the world, China's recovery is not going as well as everyone thought. Maybe the recession coming is going to put a little bit of a squeeze on oil right now, but I think um, OPEC is going to cut their production. U.S. is not getting what it wants out of shale. If, uh, Russia is not cheating and pumping a ton. I think oil goes higher in the long run. Uh, so you got a little bit of short-term pain, but we've got this nice trap here, uh, which for us is a beautiful thing. Um, I've also got uh, this other expiration out into the August time frame. Let's take a quick look at this trade. Uh, so we've got a 112 on an oil here. If we drop all the way to 51 again from 68, so you know what's that? 18 points almost, 17 points. Well, let's say 18 points out of 68. You know, it's like 25% drop. Okay. But if we only drop five, six bucks, we hand land in the trap. And instead of keeping our 420 bucks, we make two thousand four hundred dollars. I'll take it. No need to hedge. Hedge what needs to be hedged. Do you need to hedge oil? I don't. I'm okay at assignment too, way down in here. Uh, but I'm I'm even better landing in this big fat trap where we make a ton of money. All right. So there's oil. Es. So let's look. We got two different expirations. This one expiration coming up in 16 days is just the remainder of a 112. It's just we've already closed the naked puts for winter. Uh, 95 percent winner so i'm all i'm doing is keeping these two um trades on which is essentially for us uh those are it's just a put debit spread so if the market drops down to 3800 or so in the next 16 days we only stand to make money uh on this trade um so we'll make four thousand dollars if we drop if we don't we'll just lose that piece but we already covered that with the naked puts that we've already closed for winter. So it's already a winter trade um, overall. So not too worried about that expiration. Let's look at this other ES. Now there's a lot of trades on this one. So it's going to look a little bit funky. Look at this thing. All right, so here's our trades. We're sitting up here, right here, right around 4240 right now on ES. What if we drop? Well, if we stay right where we are, we're going to make about 20 grand. If we start to drop into here and we start 100 points, you know, or I'm sorry, 400 points lower, okay, or 300 points lower. So let's go 300 points lower, 3940, okay, or 3840, even, even if we want to go 400 points lower. Now we're starting to make 25, 26 right in here. As soon as we hit this 3800, and drop below that. So 3,800 is more than 450 points. If we drop 450 points, now we're looking at a $38,000 return, okay? And if we drop even further, uh, we're looking at a four to 40 to 50, 44 to $50,000 return in this big fat area. We would have to hit 3,200 before we even start to get concerned. Okay, 3,200. So that's a thousand point drop from here, which is over 25%. Okay, we had a black swan event. Define black swan for me. Is a black swan a $500 overnight drop? Okay, would you guys be freaked out at that? Well, $500 overnight drop from 4,241 puts us at 3,700. Okay, which means this account could be worth around $45,000 versus $20,000 return. Hedge what needs to be hedged. Are you hedging this? I'm not, okay? If I get down to 3,200, then I'll start to consider taking some assignments on some of these puts in here. Maybe I own some puts around 3,000, okay? We'll see, if not, maybe we roll some out, but I'm not really 
worried about it right now. Even a thousand dollar drop, okay, is not really all that bad for our point. So I wouldn't like it. So don't get me wrong. Uh, but a five hundred dollar, six hundred dollar overnight really not going to affect us too much. Puts us in the trap, which is where we start making really, really good money uh, on this trade. Uh, and you can see overall ES, uh, you know. We do have positive deltas in this, so we do want the market to go up because when it goes up, you know, we're guaranteed that money. If it drops, depending on the speed of the drop, then our T plus zero line can potentially drop a bit negative on us. We, we can watch that happening. But got okay, decent positive delta, but really great theta on this. Uh, so I'm not too worried about ES. So, so far, we have not come across anything that we need to hedge, in my opinion. Let's take a look at gold. Okay, so we've got a couple of gold strikes here. We have a one one two in gold that's already up in twenty three days. It's already up seventy percent. Here's that trade right now. Okay, I can't even get it on the screen. So let's see. Here we go. Uh, all right, so we've we're sitting here at nineteen eighty uh, on gold. Uh, you know, nineteen eighty. If gold drops. What 10 percent that's 200 bucks, uh, puts us around or 100 bucks, I should say, about 1880. So it puts us right in here at the trap. 100 bucks on, on 1980 uh, is what about a five percent drop or so. I don't know why I had to do the math on that, uh, but even a five percent drop or so, we're in here. If not, I'm owning gold at 1850, gold at 1850. 1860 or so puts me uh, in a pretty good spot uh, on gold uh, for the long term, considering I think we're heading into a recession. I'm still thinking we're he going to hit a market sell off uh, this fall at some point, which could be nasty. I think a flight to gold, people moving into gold uh, is a very real possibility. So I think getting into this trap is all good. Probably not hedging this uh, very much here. I can withstand almost a hundred dollar drop um, on gold, uh, which is up five bucks today. Uh, all right, so there's one piece of gold. Here's the other gold. Now this contains four of our strangles. This is our weekly strangle trade. Let's take a look at where we are on these weekly strangles. And here's where we are. We're sitting not quite in the middle. We're a little bit at the far end here uh on this thing but uh you know i don't think we're in uh, a whole lot of danger we've got 200 points to the downside on gold almost 10 percent down and well over that up i'm more afraid of the upside on gold uh right now if there's a run on anything i don't think gold's selling off i think gold's rallying uh, so i want to give myself more room to the upside probably not hedging here on gold and i already have that 112 trade on so if we do draft i'm going to make more money on that 112 trade in gold. Uh, all right, so let's get into a couple of these uh, other trades that we have in, in, intermixed in here. So here is a, and I don't know why it jumps way out of this window. Crazy tasty works. Some of the worst charting stuff um, ever. So I put this on today. So it's a put butterfly. Why did I choose this particular strike? Well, you can see here, I centered this thing right around the 14,000 mark on NASDAQ futures, which is right at the expected move, okay, of about 450 to $480 uh, here. So right at the expected move, I centered this thing, and I only went out 16 days. If we move lower uh, to 1,400, which is only a 450-point drop, we can do that in a day or two, a couple days. Uh, but... Okay. This would be a, this is a nice trade to have on. This is a little bit of a hedge. If we move lower, we're in the you know potentially in the tent, and now we're looking at a hedge that costs us three hundred and fifty five bucks, potentially paying you know one, two, three thousand dollars, depending on timing and how it moves in there. So there's one of our hedges that we have on low cost. I'll pay four hundred bucks for the chance to make 3000 if we go south. If we don't go south, I'm gonna, because my theta in this account, or, you know, is 800 you know, or so, 
I could very easily make that tomorrow in just decay alone. So I don't mind spending 400 bucks today because most likely my theta tomorrow might might pay off two, three hundred dollars. So almost a free trade there. Just touching briefly, we do have corn one one two trade on. Same thing. The corn's way up here, way out of the trap. We can go all the way, go all the way down to 400. Okay, we got a 25% drop in corn. If corn continues to fall, okay, which corn has been, you know, corn has been dropping. Uh, so if we look at the daily chart, I don't know why Hastyworks does this. It's crazy. So daily, and let's just look out. I don't know, three months or something. So if you take a look at what corn's been doing, it has been selling off uh, here quite a bit uh, more recently. It's all good uh, on this on this sell off. We're sitting here with a nice one one two trade. We fall into the trap. Life is good. Uh, I'm okay if corn falls. I'm not hedging it. Okay. Soybeans, same thing. Look at this thing. Soybeans have been terrible. And there's some traders that have been stopped out in some strangles and soybeans. We've really stayed out of it since this uh, drop happened here. Um, you can see that you know, this thing just stair stepping down, maybe trying to base out here today. We'll see if that holds. However, our trade in soybeans is another 112 trade. What do we care if it goes down or not? Uh, See if we can size this properly for you. Um, so if we drop to 960, it's almost a 200 point drop uh, here, almost a 20% drop further on something that looks like this. Uh, you can't even see how far down that goes. So um, you know, I'm not too worried about soybeans right now. To me, they don't need to be hedged. Hedge what needs to be hedged. I'd be happy to take assignment here, roll it, if I need to uh, potentially even write calls against it and wheel it out. Uh, so I'm not hedging that. So I haven't really found much I'm hedging and I already have that NASDAQ hedge on. All right, American Airlines. Um, this is a naked uh, leap put uh, that we have on. This thing's up 11%. The worst thing that's gonna happen is American Airlines goes to 10 and I get assigned on one, on eight contracts of this thing. I'm really not worried about American Airlines, hedge it. Okay, would the, would the loss on this, I don't know where it would go, but let's say it goes, that we go to 10, I get assigned at 10. Well, I'm breaking even because I own it at 10. I own 800 shares. If American Airlines at all increases, which it's having a decent day today, while the market's falling 25 points, I'm not too worried about American Airlines. Do you want to hedge it? Fine. Do you think those NASDAQ, NASDAQ puts are helping? Probably. Uh, Amazon, we have a synthetic long with a covered call on this at 122 on the covered call with two days to go. It's down 60 bucks. Not too worried about that uh, right now. I don't need to really hedge this. Um, I can. I mean, if we crater to 80, um, got to worry about 300 shares dropping 20 points. Okay. All right. Now you've got six thousand dollar loss but if we hit we if we do that potentially that nasdaq uh potential winner uh could be paying off on that all right boeing we have a put spread it's defined risk you know the worst we're going to do would be to lose that five wide you know times nine so we could lose 450 bucks i don't care why would i hedge a defined risk trade we're up 15 percent anyway uh, we may be out of that. Coin is a butterfly trade uh, here on coin. We're already in the tent. So if we continue to move up, you know, it's going to be worth more. Uh, we only spent 122 bucks to get into this trade. Uh, we're already sitting at 148. Uh, and if we drop any more, we could or rise any more, we could uh, jump into this tent, uh, make up to 600 bucks or so on that trade. But it's defined risk. The most you can lose is what you put in the trade, $146, not too worried about. So Boeing, I could lose 350. Coin, I can lose 
142. I'm not even worth discussing. I'm trying to get filled on a Disney. I don't know why I can't get filled on this thing. Uh, bizarre. It, the midpoint is below what I'm trying to pay. I'm trying. I'm overpaying for this Disney call fly. If we get filled, fine. Um, this particular order is going to cost me 128 bucks to potentially make 472. Okay. I would love to get filled on it before the end of the day, which is one minute away. And it looks like that's probably not going to happen unless maybe I walk it up and I don't know that I want to. Um, end phase here, this is another call spread. The most I can lose is 150 bucks. I'm up eight, I'm up, oh, I'm up 40 bucks now uh, on it or $4, who knows? Uh, Goldman Sachs, this one is a put. Okay, um, so this one's again a, a put spread. The most I can lose uh, yep. on this Goldman Sachs, uh, here's about uh, a couple grand on this one. Uh, so four grand on this one, but I would stop out before I hit that anyway. So 416 is what I'm shoot was what I collected. My stop would be a 2x stop. The most I would lose would be 800 bucks. It's still defined risk, still not protecting that. Micron. Okay, Micron is a put spread. Okay, this thing only pays if it drops. So if the market drops, this pays off. If not, I lose 180 bucks. I'm it's a put fly. I'm not worried about it. I guess a put spread, but it's a put fly on Micron. QQQ also get a put uh, a put butterfly on this one. If the market drops a bit, then this could pay off. We've spent 135 with a chance to make 600 to a thousand or more dollars if the market drops. So to me, that's a bit of a hedge. There as well, there is a hedge. SPX, I've got three flies on uh, in here. Here's what they look like together. If this market drops anywhere into here, now we're looking at making potentially nine grand in this zone or another six grand, six grand if we drop to this zone. So there's our hedges. Maybe we'll buy something to fill in this gap a little bit more. So we've got this big giant tent uh, it doesn't have this little valley, but just because there are three, four, I'm sorry, there are four butterfly trades on in here. One's coming off in two days, uh, but we just keep putting some of these on low budget uh, hedges. Um, spy. So our spy puts, most of these are naked. We've got one long put here. If the market drops okay, into uh, this area down here. So again, SPY, if we drop 10%, that's $42, right? So out of 420, we lose 42 bucks. We're at 378. We're down in here. We're now making a little over three grand. If we, that's, that's 10%. If we drop 20% on SPY, okay, a 20% drop in SPY puts us at about 80 points lower, which is about 340. Now we're making six grand, seven grand. I feel like I'm hedged, okay? Black Swan, we dropped 20, 10% overnight, okay? Market goes down 500 points on the SPA, okay? These things start to pay, okay? This thing's gonna pay all the way down to here, okay? So if we're selling off, we've, we're, we're in good shape. And we've also got, positive say that because i have a bunch of leap puts on as well those leap puts are in here but i've got one long put that's offsetting all of you know most of that risk to the downside so that's hedged and then i've got vix trades on so let's take a look at vix uh in here crazy tasty works if vix spikes up to 30 40 45, 50 points, we're going to make $14,000 on a spike in VIX, which would happen again if we have somewhat of a black swan event. So am I hedged? Think for yourself. Okay. Am I worried about a black swan event? They happen once every five to 10 years or something. Sure, it could happen. We're all in trouble. I feel pretty confident where we are. If we melt down 10, 20%, my account really starts to pay off. Okay. It's the beautiful thing about the way I trade with neutral trading strategies, mostly strangles, and then one, one, two trades with benefit 
up or down and, and give you even more benefit to the downside while giving you theta decay. It's constructed perfectly for the most part, knock on wood, to handle anything that's a slow down move or even a fairly significant down move in the markets. I think we're okay. Is it perfect? No. Does it mean we're going to hell in a handbasket tomorrow? We won't be in trouble? No. Okay. But I believe you've got to have some hedges on. Hedge what needs to be hedged. Most of my trades don't need to be hedged. The only, I've either got defined risk trades to the upside, don't have to hedge those. I've got strangles. I have, you know, those can be hedged a tad, which I do have some hedges for those, but I've also got built in 10, 20% downsides um, on those. My 112s don't really need to be hedged. The only thing I really have to worry about is span margin expansion where the easiest way to deal with that is before a problem arises uh, is to a buy a few out of the money puts, start to reduce your buying power, but I could close out. I could do some other things with those, right? Uh, hope this was helpful video for you, how to look at your portfolio, how to look at some of the hedges that you have on. And really though, thinking of how do I hedge what needs to be hedged, okay? Don't overcomplicate it, okay? But I got to generate that theta and you saw it in my portfolio there. I'm about 0.3%. It's light for me. I want to get to 0.4%. Got to keep looking at the account. What can we do without adding a ton of risk? And our delta is $300 worth of delta on a $270,000 account. Uh, so it's 0.1, 0.12% feeling very good about the delta neutrality of the portfolio. All right, hope this was helpful. You guys have a great rest of your day. Uh, we've got $1,300 in winners to post today. We'll get those posted later. And then we've got part three of the trade plan on the strategies coming out this weekend. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.